Okay guys, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to change messages like this one, please move before type in, and also uh, pretty sure people are familiar with this one too, please wait one second, but also how to change messages in here, and also how to change messages in here, and it's gonna be very cool. And also if you already know how to do it, uh, make sure to watch this too, because we have a new setup in Chat Control Red. So. Uh, if you're like me, you're totally confused, you have no idea how to do it. Nah, I'm just kidding. Anyways, well, welcome to this uh, today's tutorial. It's actually quite easy because all you have to do is you have to install Chat Control Red, and then you're gonna see a new localization folder pop up, and you, you're gonna want to open it. And then by default, there is only one file, so you want to edit this file. Now, if you've changed the language of the plugin then you want to edit the file to which you've changed the language to. So if I change the language to Spanish, I'm going to probably see a file like that. But since we don't use Spanish right now, we use English, uh, then I want to edit this file. Simply open it up using anything that will work that is not that is not WordPad. Please do not open it on WordPad. Uh, yeah, just use anything that is good and supports UTF-8, otherwise you are in big trouble, sir. So, <laughs> how that works, um, if you have no idea what, you know, what to use, we do have a great article on Wikipedia, it's called Use Write Encoding, and it's gonna help you choose a software that I'm actually gonna, whoops, actually gonna be showing you today, this is called Notepad++ for Windows, for Mac and Linux, you can use tools like Atom or Sublime Text Editor. Just don't go crazy. This one is the best and it's also the easiest to use. It's literally uh, a few megabytes of size and also portable. Doesn't have to install anything. So this is it. Open up the file and bingo. Now you can see the magic 1000 lines localization file. So let's start with something that's simple. Channels disabled will pop up when channels are disabled. This is not today because today we are having channels on, so you're not gonna see it, but if you wanna edit this message, then, you know, you simply wanna edit it, right? Hello, and then that's it. And you just save it and then type in CHC uh, space reload or RL to make this message load, that's easy. Now, important thing to mention, if you, if you wanna use colors, you'll have to, make sure the message is in quotes. Some of the messages are not in quotes, such as this one, the header, okay? I'm pretty sure the header is this. Let me just change this to LOL. And then let's see if we nailed it. Yeah, we nailed it. If, if you wanna change the color of this, make sure to put it in quotes. Doesn't matter which type of quotes, because if you reload it, it's going to be, yeah, now it says in, in yellow, and it's gonna automatically uh, convert those quotes into single quotes. Now, stick with me, and I'm also gonna teach you how to do something like that with the double quotes inside. Then you must use single quotes all the time, but if you don't have any quotes inside, it's fine to use double quotes, so don't be confused. That's it, and that's very simple. Now, some people wanna use multiple, quote, uh, multiple lines, such as first line, and then you can use backslash and n to determine multiple lines. Now, on some systems, that this may or may not work, okay? And this is why we prefer the following syntax. You're actually gonna type in the vertical uh, line. I'm not sure how it's called. I call it the separator. And then dash, and hit enter. And then you wanna space it out a little bit. And then you can actually delete the quotes from the message and then just have it on the multiple on multiple lines like that. There we go. And now LOL and then first line is here. So it actually works just fine. Okay, it works just fine. I'm not sure why there is two why, why there is a space. It's probably because the LOL is uh, is centered. So if something is centered, you know, probably not a good idea. Not a, not a good idea to use multi lines, but if it's not centered You'll, you'll be just fine. Now say, you know, we wanna edit this, there is no one in the range, you can chat to, and we have something called uh, dynamic parse variables, which is a Hail Mary, it's a proprietary system that we have invented specifically, and especially for chat control, you're not gonna find it anywhere else, 
And the reason why we did it is that sometimes, you know, there is just a tiny variation in the, in the message and the rest of the message stays the same. So let me illustrate this using my favorite drawing board. So we have, let me actually use, um, please move message for an example. This one is even simpler. So you have the message for chat and then you have the message for command, okay? And the player then sees the message, hey, you have to move before chatting. And then player sees the message when he types in command, you have to move before running commands. And problem is that this long part of the message is the same and we only have to change these things here at the end. Please move before chatting. Please move before uh, doing commands, right? Now, if we didn't have the system, we would literally have to copy paste it and do something like move chat and then move command right at the bottom. You get a point. And the whole file would not have 1000 lines. It would have 5000 lines. I'm not kidding. So we wanted to make something unique and special for you guys. And the way it works is that it, it, it combines these things into something called the hybrid, which is going to be compiled uh, live using java script just in time compiler very cool if you are not into javascript you know if you are a beginner no idea how to code don't freak out don't have to code at all okay don't have to code at all but how it works is that we have the same message as we had and then there is a condition so we're gonna ask hey is this a chat and if it's if it is a chat message we're simply gonna put in chat here and then if it's not a chat message, we are going to put in a command here. So let me show how it works. Please move before type in and then the condition in quotes and then some other stuff in here. So let me break this down for you guys because the quotes here are driving people crazy. I know the problem with those is that I have to space it out to show it to you guys better. Now you can see it better. So basically, you know, any code that's using JavaScript and that's using colors, yada, yada, has to be in quotes, as I already explained above, such as this one. Okay, so these quotes are the initial quotes, normal quotes in here, one, one. Now, anytime you have a piece of message, for example, this is, this is a piece of message, this is a piece of message, and then this is a piece of message, and then we have a, <laughs> we have a dot here, that's also a piece of message. Anytime you have it, you have to also use quotes. Right, so we have to use quotes here. The problem is program breaks if you only use the same same quote type because what do you, what it'll, it'll think it'll think that hey the message is only going from this to that. Okay, we have to give the program a special sign that hey this here is actually not the end of the message is actually start of it. So how it works is we simply add one more quote. So these are the inner quotes. Okay. This is the standard quote and these are the inner quotes and we're going to use them everywhere when there is a message and we're going to connect these messages using plus so once again you have the big uh, you know the first the main quotes that you're going to want to use everywhere else too and then you have the inner quotes which are just the same and they, they separate the different uh, JavaScript parts, the different words inside of the message, right? And then plus, and then the condition, uh, always make sure to use brackets, otherwise it will do weird, weird things. And basically what it'll do, it will ask, hey, is this a chat? And then it's gonna ask, hey, is this a chat? Really, yes, if it is, it's gonna print out into chat, so please move before typing into chat. And if it isn't, it's gonna print out, please move before typing commands. End of end of condition plus, and then another uh, string, another message, just a single freaking comma, and I mean dot here. It's easy, easy. Once you get used to the system, it's actually beautiful because it really saves you time. It really uh, makes things really unique and it really pushes it to the next level. But you have to get used to it really. So. Once again, you have the full message, you have the first part that's static, it's not going to change, then you have the condition, and then you have the second part also static. Now, also, regarding the prefixes in here, for example, this one, 
Uh, if you want to change those, navigate down to the file and you can see prefixes in here. Say I want to use a smiley face instead of the thing uh, called exclamation mark. There we go. Now, now we, we can see a smiley face. Now, say you don't want to use, use anything. Uh, you don't want to use anything. That's totally fine. Set it to empty or you can also set it to none. That's easy. Now, if you want to use it somewhere where this is not being used, um, for example, roles. Let me just show you how this works, chat. And then you want to use it in any role. You can actually use this variable prefix underscore and then the type. So info success, warn error, question and announce all lower cases. You can use this like that and it works like that. Can I have all? Oh. And then it says, Currently, we're not looking for new staff and you can see the annoying double uh, space. So actually, it would be better to have it this way. There we go. Now it only has one space. Correct. So this is how it works. This is how we can use the prefixes in different parts of the plugin. All right. And final thing when it comes to these variables. So in any variable you can use, sorry, in any uh, message, you can use different variables. So you can use, you know, the player variable. And all the information about it is in the Wikipedia, but I just wanted to show you, hey, uh, you can simply plug it in, you know, you can simply place them inside here. If you want to make, um, you know, if you want to only make the variable, then make sure to put it into double quotes if you're dealing with the JavaScript messages. Okay, so for example, say I want to, I want to say to the player, please wait uh, X amount of time before your next message, and then comma and then the player name and then dot. There we go. And then some say we want to reload. And then it says, please wait, yada, yada, and then slash and then my nickname easy. And the prefix is being put in automatically in here. Again, if you don't want the prefix, you'll actually have to you'll actually have to just set this to empty. And there we go. Now you can't see any prefix and you actually have to do the color yourself and anything that's in there. So that's it guys for this video. If you need any help, drop me a message using GitHub, not using the localization file, of course, so using GitHub, drop me a ticket there. I'll try to get back to you in a few days and I hope that helps.